In today's video, I'm going to show you step by step how I embossed this brass coin using the Xtool F1 Ultra. And on top of that, I'm giving away my Creative Space file with settings for free. All right, let's take a second to talk about the graphic we'll be working with today. On the left hand side of your screen, you'll see the image I generated as it looks directly out of the AI program. It's just a grayscale image, round emblem of a chicken or a rooster, whatever, amongst some flowers and foliage and whatnot. On the right hand side of your screen, you'll see the depth map file conversion of this image. So whenever we're looking to emboss on a coin using our F1 Ultra, using the embossment mode, you have to convert whatever your image is into a depth map file. I've already done two or three videos in the past on how to use AI to come up with image ideas and then convert them into depth maps. So I'm not gonna cover that extensively in this video, but I'm using the same process as I did in my Viking coin video where I use Midjourney AI to create this image, then I used Depth R to create the depth map. If you wanna try creating your own AI images and depth maps and you don't wanna go through the trouble of trying out all these external programs, there are features within Xtool Creative Space where you can do this. You don't even have to leave Creative Space to come up with your own AI images and then convert them to depth maps. It'll do it right there in the program. So you can definitely try that out. But for today, if you want the exact same Creative Space file that I'm using in this video, there is a link to download it in the video description below. I've already edited the file. I've already created a depth map. So all you're gonna have to do is size it for your coin. Let's continue. All right, jumping into Creative Space, if you're following along with the file I provided, it should look something like this. I've never shared a Creative Space file before, so I'm hoping all of the settings and everything are saved correctly. But if not, we'll talk about it here and you can just input it as need be. So first thing you're obviously going to want to do is run your autofocus to get the thickness of your coin and then refresh the snapshot, the, the snapshot preview so your coin is placed on the surface like ours is here. And then over in the top, corner, you'll see our graphic. This is our depth map of the chicken we're going to be engraving. And it should already have this setting up here, the mode set for you. It has to be set to embossment to do any of the embossing work. So just make sure that the mode is set to embossment. Otherwise, this is not going to work at all. Okay, so right now the chicken is way too big. I'm setting it at 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters, and then you're gonna have to shrink it down to the size that you want based off of the engraving uh, size of the coin. So my coin is roughly 50 millimeter diameter, and I'm going to um, bring the margins in a little bit. So I'm gonna do 46. So over here, I'm just gonna change it to 46 by 46. It's gonna shrink the size of my engraving and then I can drag it over to my coin. Um, I'm just looking for a rough placement on the coin. I don't trust cameras and lasers at all because the perspective is always gonna be skewed a little bit. And with a coin especially, this has to be pretty much spot on, otherwise you're definitely gonna notice it. So I'm kind of just eyeballing this for now and what we'll really do is we'll use the framing feature to make sure everything is exactly where we want it okay so let's talk about the settings here first setting it should say brass coin this is the setting that i saved specifically for this coin laser type fiber ir we're engraving metal so we need it to be fiber ir number of layers 256 what that means is it is going to run the engraving 256 times. So depending on the size of your coin, you know, you're going to want to pack a lunch because you're going to be here for a while. Power, I run it at 100%. Uh, this is only a 20 watt fiber laser. So I want to make sure I get as much of the power as I possibly can to dig into this brass coin. The speed, I have it at 900 millimeters a second. 
if this number is different in the file that you have, use that number because it just, that just means I made an, an executive decision to change this after the fact, but it's probably gonna be 900 or 1000 or something like that. I'm gonna do one pass. Lines per centimeter, I'm gonna do 280 lines per centimeter. I saved this file as a really high DPI, something like seven, eight or 900 DPI I saved this file as, so it's a lot of detail. And I want, I want that to reflect in the engraving. Engraving angle, 30%, uh, sorry, 30 degrees. This doesn't matter too much for what we're doing. Next up, the frequency. We're gonna keep it at 30. There's a range from 30 to 60, I believe, at the time I'm filming this video. 30 is going to give us the strongest pulses of energy to really dig into that brass. If you go up any higher, like if you were to do 60, it's just a lot weaker of an impact on your brass. So keep this at the lowest number you can, and that's gonna be 30. The send at Z axis, I have this on. So what this means is after every couple layers, whatever amount of layers you say, the tower is actually gonna down focus a little bit. So it's gonna make up for that material that you just engraved off. So it doesn't go out of focus. The focus on these lasers are pretty narrow. So once you go out of focus, it's not enough energy directed at the brass to get a good engraving. So I have this set for every two layers. It's gonna just descend by 0 0.01. It seems to work fine. Uh, if you wanna mess with this, you can, but I haven't played with it too much. Okay, so those are our settings. Next, we're gonna to go to framing. So when you click framing, make sure that you have it on outline because if it's a rectangle, it's just gonna show you kind of the rectangle that you see here with the selection and it's really hard to place the image on the coin. But when you do it as an outline, it's gonna run a circle around the, the perimeter of the photo. And that will give you a much easier positioning tool. So run your framing as outline. And then this is where you're gonna go over to your laser and open up the shield and kind of move the coin to make sure it's right where you want it. You want, that, you want it nice and centered on your coin. Make sure it's not too far to the left or the right or the top or the bottom. This is kind of tough to do, but you know, you gotta really pay attention to where your image is landing on your coin. All right, now let's take a second to talk about your coin selection because the quality of the coin you start with is gonna directly impact the quality of your final engraving. I have a couple examples here. These are all brass. I'm gonna be using brass for the project today but they come in all kinds of different metals, copper, aluminum, stainless steel, and all kinds of different sizes. The big problem comes when you're buying these things online because some sellers are very loose with what they call brass. It might just be the color brass, but you don't know exactly what kind of metal is inside of that coin. So here's an example here that you'll probably see a lot. This is a coin that comes from Amazon. They usually come in packs of like, 15 or 20 for a pretty reasonable price, so we're automatically drawn to them. This is probably not actually brass. Uh, it's the color of brass on the surface, but once you start digging into this coin, it doesn't really react as cleanly as an actual brass coin does. You can see the surface is, let me focus here, kind of noisy, kind of grainy. It's about two millimeters thick. It's just not a high quality coin. And these are fine for when you're practicing, when you're wrapping your head around the process and you don't wanna spend a lot of money wasting coins. Use something like the coins you can get on Amazon. But if you're looking for like an end product that you wanna to sell to someone, you should probably not use these Amazon blanks that cost like a dollar a piece. And you can always tell by the price if, it's, if, it, if it says it's a brass coin and it costs like a dollar, it's probably not real brass. Now let's take a look at some actual solid brass coins. Three different sizes, three different suppliers, and I'll link all the suppliers in the video description below. Let's start with the smaller one. So this is from a shop called Heavy Metal Blanks, and it's about one and a quarter inch diameter, so it's pretty small. But you can just see how clean the machine surface is the edges are just have this like beautiful knurling pattern on them. And compared to this random metal from 
Amazon, the quality difference is substantial just by looking at it. Next up, this is also an Amazon coin, but it's from a very uh, well reputable seller on Amazon. So I believe that it's solid brass. And again, you can just see nice clean surface, has nice edges, has the nice pattern around the edge. And again, compared to this metal coin, it just looks much better. And our final coin, this is what we're gonna use for the project today, this giant 48 millimeter diameter. I think this is four millimeters thick piece of brass. This is from a shop called Limitless Solutions. I've been keeping this around for a while because I had no use for it, but I think today is a good time to use it. Again, just a giant hunk of solid brass. And using a coin like this is gonna greatly increase the quality of your final result. Okay, let's get this party started. Uh, right off the top, I wanna to apologize for the quality of some of the footage you're about to see. I put my GoPro in the enclosure really close to the coin and I thought this was in focus and it looked good, but it doesn't really look that good. Honestly, this is a pretty boring process to watch. As I mentioned earlier in the video, it's a really, really long job. The one that I'm doing at this size is almost three and a half hours long. As far as what you should expect to see happening for the first 20 or 30 minutes of the job, it'll look like not much is going on. But after that point, after about the half hour mark, you'll start to see some of the top level details of your image pop through. But don't get too excited because you're in for a really long haul. Usually I just keep an eye on it to make sure everything looks good but I don't really pay attention until like the last five minutes because that's when you really start to see everything come together. And I just wanna mention the little orange nozzle you see in the video in case anyone's curious about what that is. That's an air assist that I use for my other fiber laser that I kind of just brought over to this one. It's gonna be blowing a constant stream of air onto the surface of my coin, which keeps the brass dust off the coin. You can see it all piling up in the back corner there. Not essential at all to do this, but if you're gonna be doing a lot of embossing, it wouldn't hurt to pick one up in the future. It keeps the coins nice and clean. All right, let's take a look at our coin, our finished coin fresh out of the laser. It's pretty filthy. Has a couple areas that got burnt, it looks like, up on the head there and down here and up here. So what happened there was either I ran this file too hot or what I think happened was the brass dust that's getting lasered. Sometimes it'll fall back down onto your piece. And when there's a lot of little crevices like you see here, let me zoom in better. When there's a lot of little crevices in your design, it gets trapped in those crevices and then you laser over it and it basically fuses it back into the brass. So that kind of sucks, but hopefully we can clean it up. And as far as cleanup goes, one thing you could do, which I did not do, is run a clean pass over your entire design. You would not run that with the emboss mode. You would just run it as the shape of the circle there. And you would run it at a higher power, or sorry, a lower power, a higher frequency, and a faster speed. And what that does is it just kind of pushes all, it vaporizes all that dust and dirt out of your piece and leaves you with like, you know, a nicer canvas. I haven't figured out a clean pass that I like on the F1 Ultra yet, so I didn't do that. We're going to clean this by other means. Originally, I filmed myself using my magnetic tumbler to do the cleaning, but it was a fail. All right, so after a couple minutes in the tumbler, I'm gonna abandon ship on this one. This coin is just way too big for a tumbler of that size. The whole thing was shaking. It looked like it was gonna shoot off of the machine. So the smaller coins work completely fine in the tumbler, but this big four millimeter uh, thick, 50 millimeter diameter brass coin does not work in the tumbler. So what we're gonna do is just try to clean this thing up manually. I have a little bit of the soap on top of here from the tumbler. And what I'm just gonna do is kind of just scrub it with this brush here and see if we can clean it up nicely. Okay. 
Next, I'm gonna take a piece of some fine steel wool and kind of just continue the process, really shine it up. So at this point, if you like the really shiny look, you can just keep polishing with finer grades of steel wool until it comes out the way that you like. But I like a more vintage looking brass coin style that really brings out the highlights and the shadows of this design. So let's do that. To create the antique look I want for this coin, I'm gonna be using this stuff called Brass Ager. And what this is gonna do is within the span of, I don't know, 20 to 30 seconds, it's going to turn the surface of this coin almost completely black. If you watch the Viking coin video I did, I used something similar called Brass Black. Both of these work. I just find using the Brass Ager a little bit easier to deal with. So that's what we're gonna use for today. So let's do it. The cool thing about this stuff is you don't really need a lot and you can do like multiple coins and brass items. So here we go. And this is real time, I'm not fast forwarding this at all. You can just see how quickly it starts turning. Now, whenever you want to stop the reaction, you got to pull it out and then you dip it into some water. And now that neutralizes the reaction. You can see how dark that is. So now here's the fun part. Let's reveal the details. I'm using a scotch pad here. And what I'm going to do is just basically wet sand this. After spending a couple minutes cleaning with the Scotch-Brite pad and the steel wool, I'm at a point where I'm happy with the way this is looking. For my last step, I'm gonna burnish with a little bit of wax. This is probably not required, but I just like the way it gives a nice little overall sheen to the surface of the coin. To do that, I'm gonna be using a Dremel with these little felt polishing tips and some Renaissance wax. And here's a look at our finished coin. This is the second coin I did on my F1 Ultra, and honestly, it's one of the best coins I've ever done, period. Even though this machine only has 20 watts, I managed to get good depth and kept all those really fine details in my image. The only thing I would do differently next time around is either increase the speed a tiny bit or decrease the power a little bit, just to avoid some of that burning. But it cleaned up nice and it looks awesome. Hello there, I just smacked myself in the face with a car door. So if you like this video, myself and my face, we'd greatly appreciate if you could just tap the like button. And if you're in the market to pick up an X-Tool F1 Ultra to make coins like we did in the video today, I would greatly appreciate if you could use the link in the video description below. It doesn't cost you anything, but Xtool will kick back a couple bucks to me, which helps me pay for the copious amounts of brass coins that I'm buying and taking the time to film all these videos. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.